Okay, welcome back again to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at something a little bit different out of the ordinary. Uh, you know, we've covered motherboards, we've covered video cards, all that. Today we're going to take a look at Synology's latest network attached storage device. It's their DS1512 Plus. Um, the box itself comes in, it's kind of, you know, a little bit plain. It's just plain brown cardboard. Um, we're not 100% sure if it's recycled, but it does have that recycled feel to it. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of pictures, except for the small label here. It's going to give you information on what the device is. Now in the box is a 5-bay NAS. However, it's capable of being stacked with additional trays to give you a full 15 drives that you can attach to this, which is pretty exceptional as far as expandability in a network attached storage device. Usually when you move into that level, you're kind of talking about your more traditional storage area networks, which are much more expensive and but they're also much more robust so we're very interested in seeing exactly what you get inside here and exactly what this is going to bring to the table so we're going to go ahead and get this open we'll get everything laid out on the table that comes in the box and we'll talk about exactly what this device is and what it brings to you all right we're back we've gotten it out of the box which is uh you know, it's a heavy device, uh, so it's a little bit of a chore to get it out, but not too terribly much. You can see it is nicely encased in some pretty stiff uh, styrofoam here. You're not going to get a whole lot of bump damage. Normally, these do not ship with drives, so there's not a fear of damaging the drives. However, you can get them pre-configured, so you definitely want to make sure that you're not going to receive a lot of impact damage. Um, our box, when we received it, was inside of another box, which was also very nicely packaged, so it kind of adds that into it. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the accessories that Synology provides first. There's not a terrible amount of accessories, but they are nice to include. Of course, you get two network cables. These are always handy to include. I mean, if you're working with this kind of device, you're going to have network cables with you. But it's still nice that they include it, especially considering the fact that there is a dual network controller in here. Of course, you have a power cord, always important. You have screws for adding drives and for changing things and then you have your keys that allow you access to the bays and we'll take a look at those in just a minute you also have a nice little welcome package here tells you read this first it's information about the device and you also have your driver and uh, well not really a driver disc but it's also got your quick installation guide a user's guide a setup utility and it's got some diagnostics in it so we'll take a look at this real quick after we pull it out of the package this is pretty much just a quick installation guide in several languages. It folds out to a poster and tells you the information uh, that you need to check, uh, compatibility for drives, what is and what isn't going to work in this device, and it just gets you ready for what you need. So we'll go ahead and get the large styrofoam off of here, and then we'll pull it out of its styrofoam encasing. Again, this just protects it from additional scratches and damage. And make sure that when you receive this, Everything's in working order. All right, so this is our first look at the NAS. Looks like some of the bays have come out. That's probably, you know, of course it's going to happen in shipping. If we're taking a look at it. You do, you see you have your five bays. These are not locked, so they pretty much, you just pop them out, and then these slide out. Now, these were pre-configured with uh, one terabyte drive, so we're going to have uh, five terabytes of storage on this once we're, once we're ready. Again, it's got a nice clean look in the front. You can see your alerts, uh, your LANs are going to be open. This one doesn't have an LED like we've seen on some of the other models, but it appears to have some uh, extra functionality. And again, that ability to stack is just going to provide you with some better features than what you might see in one that does provide you with an LED display. Uh, we have one in right now that although it has an LED display, it's not running all the time. So the information that it might provide is a little limited, except for on boot. So we'll take a look at the back. You have fans here, and what appears to be uh, uh, these two fans are actually removable for cleaning. They're fairly easy to remove. You have your uh, power plug, which this fits in quite a bit farther than most of them. That's going to prevent it from being kicked out. You have multiple eSATA ports as well as two USB 3.0 ports on this device. Here are your dual LANs, and you have a cluster of four regular USB 2.0 ports. And of course, we'll go back to the front and talk about locking this. You place your key in. Once the key's in, you can turn it, and of course now it's not going to open up, which is nice. A nice feature, so somebody doesn't accidentally bump it, and then you lose a drive that's in a RAID setup. And of course, the, you know, when you have your higher levels of RAID, something like that can cause quite a bit of uh, problems, <laughs> as we've seen in the past. 
So that's just covering the cosmetics of the outside. You have a nice Synology kind of embossed into the sides here. We're going to go ahead and strip off the cover as we always do and take a look at some of the insides. All right, the first thing that we've done is we've actually removed the two fans. It's just two screws and they kind of drop in. And it's very easy to get your hands inside here. Now let's see if you can see that in here. To reach the power plugs. They're all the way down at the bottom. They're really not going to give you any kind of, a tru any kind of trouble to get in there and actually um, reach in there and get those in and out if you need to. So you can see that they're right in there, very clean, very easy if you want to take these out for cleaning. You just pretty much reach in, pop them out, and of course they're easy to put back in. So we'll go ahead and get those off to the side here, and now we'll remove these screws to take off the outer casing. You also get a fairly good glimpse at the, uh, the back plane, which is right along here. You can see where the drives connect in and where they just uh, plug into that back plane. We'll be taking a look at that directly here in just a minute. We'll also remove all five of the drives and take a look from the inside to see how clean that inner casing is as well. And normally this isn't something that you're going to do when you get one of these, but we like to take a look and see exactly what kind of hardware is, is provided in any of these devices. So we'll get our screws in our little tray here. One in the center we've missed. Okay, so now we got the case cover off, and we can see over here you have where your power supply is connecting. The power supply is along the side. It has a high uh, density fan, so it's going to provide some cooling in here. There's no direct ventilation, so those fans are going to be really responsible for getting air inside this case to make sure that it's kept cool. So we're going to go ahead and pop all five of our drives out as well right now. Stack those over here. All right. So again, you can see the power supply connects through here. You have a couple of different plugs that are under here. And the motherboard is what's actually going to be on this back end over here. There's a slot for additional RAM if you want to put it in there. There is RAM that's already inside here. We're going to go ahead and pull this motherboard in just a second. And we'll show you exactly what uh, is included when you buy one of these. So we're going to go ahead and get that pulled out. And then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We've gotten it pretty much disassembled. We did have to remove the power supply in order to pull out the, uh, the back plane here. Which, as you can see, has its two power adapters. You see your SATA support for five drives. Now the interesting thing about this is even though it's not an SAS controller, this back plane is actually set up for SAS. You can see the additional pins right in there along that side. Now what this means, does this mean that we're going to see SAS support in future revisions or in future models of this? It's quite a possibility, but this back plane definitely supports both SATA and SAS drives. So you, I doubt you could put these in, SAS drives in here and get them to function correctly. It's just going to be a different controller, they're not going to see it, but at the same time this back plane does have the support for it, which is nice to see. Now we'll move on and we'll take a look at the USB 3.0 controller. What you have here actually is an NEC processor, which is uh, going to be one of your better ones, although we do know that uh, ASUS has moved to a different one. This is going to be the 7202-200, and it's going to give you the, the power for your two USB uh, 3.0 ports. This is also additional power, although this plugs directly into the motherboard. Um, via an expansion slot. You also have your two eSATA ports that you can see here. Those are going to be run directly off of the motherboard themselves. So we'll take a look at the motherboard. Okay, as we mentioned before, here's your 24 pin power port. You have an Intel ICH10R controller chip here, which is a pretty Im impressive one to see on such a small device. You also have an Intel D2700 Atom processor. It's a 32 nanometer processor. Dual core, but it has hyper threading, so it's going to be able to handle four threads per operation. This up here is going to be your networking controller card. This is also going to be an Intel that provides for the dual gigabit LAN there. Now this controller here is actually going to be your Intel 8257, uh, excuse me, Intel 82574L controller, which is, a, again, it's a very nice one. It's small. It's running on a, off of a PCIe 1.1 interface, so it's going to give you about uh, 2.5 uh, you know, gigabits per second transfer rate across this. 
and that's still pretty nice. It also has an external USB connector there. I'm not exactly sure what that's for or, or why it would be there, but it's, it's still interesting to see in it in there. Overall, the construction is very clean. You see your fan ports. You, this is going to be your out for your uh, front panel controls and for your lighting. And it's just nice. You can put in additional RAM here. The module that is included is uh, actually one gigabit worth of data. You have your vo you know, warranty void if removed there, so we've definitely killed our warranty at this point. And of course you have an additional slot on the back for another SO dem. Uh, from what we're reading, it looks like it's capable of supporting up to eight gigabits, you know, eight gigabytes of uh, RAM that you could put on here. So you could put in two four gigabyte DIMMs. It is DDR3, so that brings it up, and it's it's a pretty nice setup here. So again, you can look inside here. the The actual slides for the hard drives are very nice. They're clean. They're solid plastic, unlike some of the ones we've seen where they're metal. There's not going to be a lot for the drives to catch on, like any burrs. We've seen that with. Uh, a couple of different manufacturers including Seagate. We've also seen it with Thecus where the slides where the drives go in is a little bit difficult and you kind of have to to wiggle them in. This in addition to having you know solid plastic on the drive trays is also going to just give you a better slide through there. They just slide in and out. They're very easy to put in, very easy to take out. So there's really nothing to it. Now moving on to the power supply, which we talked about a little bit earlier. We said we did have to remove this in order to get everything that we wanted to, to see out. Power supply is a Seasonic 250 watt power supply that's going to run everything. We mentioned the high capacity fan there, so and uh, it's going to get enough air through here just to keep everything cool and keep us running on this uh, Synology DS1512 Plus NAS. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get everything back together, we'll put all of our drives in, and we'll get this up on the test bench and get some tests running for you. So you can see just exactly how well this performs. The tests we're going to run are going to be direct file transfer, streaming audio, streaming video, as well as streaming files. We'll probably set up this uh, connected into our FTP server to allow for some transfer over the network. We'll run the network connector controllers, there are two, we're going to run them in as many modes as possible including if they have the link aggregation protocol, we'll get that set up. We'll see just how quick and how fast this is. As a last step, we're going to migrate as many of our virtual machines from our vSphere 5.0 environment as that we have onto this and run those directly from there for a couple of days just to see how capable it is to run in that capacity. This would be an excellent product for a small business that's looking to get into to VMware. We know from the past that Synology supports not only iSCSI connections but also supports the network file system both of which are compatible and work with VMware. We're going to try and run different settings. We'll run an iSCSI volume as well as a network file system volume and see just how well this works in as many uh, scenarios as we possibly can get. So that covers our introduction to this today and we'll go ahead and get everything put back together, get this up on the test bench and then we'll let you know exactly how well it performs.